Hello everybody, this is Kevin Ring with a video tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to program and use user keys in the Event Master Toolset system. So here I have my simulated Barco E2 Gen 2 and just to say I did, I'm going to program a few destinations very quickly, specifically a three projector blend and I'll add a few layers. Uh, I have a video uh, on my channel that shows how to build the destinations and apply layers, so do check that out if you need a refresher. I will also build a few inputs, just use some SDI sources, and I will add multiple inputs. Cool. So now I'm going to go to my programming page, and as a friendly reminder, you are able to set thumbnails for your sources. This allows you to put some type of JPEG or PNG image so you can reference the source. It's great for programming. To do so, you go from list mode to thumbnail view. And now I will find a thumbnail. And froze. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> All right, I'll do camera one, camera two, camera three. Camera four, great. So I'm gonna add my source to my programming page on the preview screen, and it has created a layer for me automatically. This is on layer one. So we know that a preset is storing a complete look on a destination. So this will have our background sources, our layers, effects, borders, shadows, everything like that, and we build and recall presets. So what a user key is, is it's very similar, except rather than storing an entire look or composition, we're going to store specific parameters of a layer. This will allow us now to utilize this parameter in future programming. So I like to always consider these to be the building blocks of presets. So let me demonstrate. For example, let's say I built a pip here on the left hand side of my screen. <coughs> Excuse me. And I love this pip. This is the size I want it to be. I always want it to be this size and this location. What I can do now, rather than going into the adjust tab and going into uh, window adjustment, this is out, and memorizing these parameters, I can store all these parameters as a user key. So I'm going to go to my user key tab right next to presets. And I can say which ones I want to store, what parameters of the layer. By default, everything is selected. Type, transition, effect, border, shadow, key, position, size, source, mask, keyframe, freeze. But I'm going to turn them all off and only select the ones that I want. So I want this window's size and position to be stored. So I will select position and size. And now with this layer selected, I will hit save to new user key. And I'm going to call this left hip. So now to test this out, I can take my layer and resize it. And I'm going to take my user key and drag and drop it ooh, onto the layer. Let me make it a different one as well. If I were to add a second layer, take my user key, it will affect it. So that's really fun. The other one that's very popular to do is to do one for a border and drop shadow. Borders and drop shadows are a very nice composition look. If you go to the adjust tab, you go to layer main, you can turn a border on and you can turn on a shadow. So now if I want to maintain and, and guarantee that every layer I do has the same border and the same shadow, I can store this as a user key as well. So I'm going to go to my user keys tab. I'm going to select border and shadow. And I'm going to save to new user key. I'll call this border and shadow. Now to test this out, I'll bring in a new layer. I'll apply my border and shadow. Bada bing, bada boom. Now as you start doing these user keys, you are going to notice some intended behavior of the layers. So everything we've been doing right now has been a layered based adjustment. We are not applying border and shadow to say camera one or a DDR one. No, we are applying the border and shadow shadow to layer one and layer two. As a result, any source that's brought onto that same layer will still have the layer parameters that you selected. This is not a bug, this is intended behavior. So as a result, 
one thing we always ask you to do or you want to do for yourself is to create the adverse of the user key or the nullification. AKA, I want to make a user key that turns the border and shadow off. So let me show you how to do that. So first I'm going to manually turn the border and shadow off. Beautiful. Then now in my user keys tab, I'm going to make sure that border and shadow are selected. This is where it gets a little tricky. So I'm actually storing the border and shadow parameters of this layer. It just so happens the border and shadow is turned off, but I want to store that. I know, tricky. I'm going to call this no border, no shadow. So now I can turn the border and shadow on. I can uh, turn the border and shadow off. I could, of course, set the pip location and more. So in a future video, I will show you how to do uh, what we call binding sources to user keys. But for the most part, these are how you do user keys now. I love doing them for masking, position size. They're really fun, uh, super helpful for programming. Friendly reminder, these will show up on your controller as well. Um, here's your user keys tab. So if you do use a user key, you're able to use this on your controller as well. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff.